In this video, we'll show how to use an implicit model to control the field that ultimately goes on to control lattice properties. We'll start this demonstration with this imported triangle mesh model of the Stanford Bunny. Although it's not necessary, I'm going to convert this triangle mesh model into a polynerbs subdivision model. I'm going to use a thousand polynerbs patches to capture the geometry. And as you can see, we get a nice smooth result. With the bunny now in polynerbs format, I can proceed with the lattice design. And for this, I'm going to use a strut lattice. Having clicked the strut lattice button, I select the bunny model and I can now start editing my lattice properties. I'll just change the visualization settings to be high so that we can see more detail and set the strut diameter at 0.5 millimeters. To get some more unit cells, I'll ask for a count of 16 repetitions along the longest dimension. I'll surround the lattice with a shell. And for this, I'm going to use an inward shell of two millimeters so that we have the same surface on the outside of the model. A section plane can be used to show the interior detail of the lattice inside the shell. To avoid any stress raising features, I'm also going to use a fillet transition between the lattice and the outer shell. I can experiment with different sizes and 1.5 millimeters works well in this case. For the next step, I'm going to roll back the construction history to before the lattice was created. I'll then create a copy of the implicit representation of the bunny model and paste that. This second model will be used to create the field that we'll use to drive the lattice properties. I'll now roll the timeline forward again in the construction history so that we have the lattice in the scene once again. I'll hide the copy and pasted model of the bunny for now, just so we can see what's going on. If I now edit the lattice, I can click on the field driven design icon next to strut diameter, and it will give me some options. I'm going to use the create field option in this case. The default setting is for it to show a field created based on the z equals zero plane as the driving object. I'm going to deselect that and instead select the converted polynerbs object that I created using the copy and paste operation. I now need to say what the minimum and maximum distance to the surface of this model should be in order to capture the field. In this case, I'm going to go from zero millimeters, which is on the surface, to minus 20 millimeters inside of the surface. You can play with these to your heart's content until you get the right effect. It's often a good idea to use the clamp function when creating the output range at rescaled values, and this stops values going beyond certain limits that you set. I'd like the minimum strut thickness to be 0.5 millimeters, and I'd like the maximum strut thickness to be one millimeter. I can play around with these until I get an effect that I like. It's often a good idea to use the slicing plane and move that around to inspect the result that we're getting. So far, these parameters seem to be working well, but I'll make a few further changes to see if I can really push the limits of the gradient that I'm introducing. What you can see is that near the surface of the bunny, I have the higher density or the thicker lattice struts, and further away towards the center, I have the thinner struts. I'm now just inspecting the lattice using the slicing planes to check that the geometry is valid in all of the locations. I can see here that it's getting a bit thin at the deeper parts of the model, and that might be something I'd like to change later on. Using this alternative view, 
we can see that they are indeed quite thin and whilst it's still valid I think it would be better to improve those thicknesses in those areas. So we can see here that I went down to 0.2 millimeters and that was probably too severe so I'll increase that to 0.3 and visually inspect the result again. I'll do a final inspection to check that I'm happy with the result. I can see they're thicker now. And indeed, this is a design that I'm happy to proceed with. Now that I'm satisfied with the design, I can conclude this video. And that is how you use implicit geometry to use field-driven design to edit lattice properties.